The space race, our next guest, has been at the very forefront. Pam Melroy is deputy administrator of NASA and a former astronaut, one of only two women to command a space shuttle. Also, she's a former military combat pilot, and she's logged more than 38 days in space. The U.S. made more than 100 space launches last year, more than China, more than Russia. But its moon missions have had a string of setbacks and delays. I asked Melroy where this leaves the United States when she joined me from NASA HQ in Washington. Pam Melroy, welcome to the program. Thank you, Christian. I'm a fan and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Thank you. Well, I'm a huge space fan. Um, I, too, watched the uh, moonwalk, uh, Apollo, Apollo 11. Can I just ask you this, though? Are we in another space race? You know, for 50 years, the United States dominated. And now, with the private enterprise, uh, you know, coming into the space travel, the space exploration, we saw, just recently, a very hyped um, space SpaceX starships blowing up after takeoff in the U.S. last year. Um, NASA was hoping that these would really be, you know, some, some pioneering voyages. We see that, and then we heard the announcement that the Artemis mission to orbit the moon is going to be delayed, and then the next Artemis mission to land on the moon for the first time in decades is going to be further delayed. At the same time, countries like India, China, Japan are having national celebrations about their successes. Does this worry you? Oh, not in the least. Uh, we have plenty of our own successes. And uh, I think, uh, you know, that's, that's evident. Uh, really, we have the only vehicle that is currently capable of taking humans to deep space. Um, we're the only ones who have that capacity today. So uh, that's huge. Um, whatever you hope to do, if you don't have that, uh, and, it, and it takes a long time to develop that capability. Really, I think uh, we look at this a little bit differently. Apollo was about taking a man to the moon and returning him safely to Earth. And that was the end. We're doing something very different with Artemis. We are trying to build a blueprint for responsible, sustained human exploration of the solar system, which means we need to take our time, we need to pay attention to safety, and we also need to be thinking about doing much harder things, which is sustaining a human presence in deep space. This is not about a camping trip. This is actually about pushing humanity into the solar system. We've learned from the space station how hard it is to sustain people in space. It's a huge logistical problem. So uh, from our standpoint, we feel like we have all the pieces in place to go forward. We're going to do it methodically. We're going to do it safely. And we're going to do it for the benefit of humanity. Are you concerned that space, you know, space could be more weaponized? It could be yet another platform for more war. I would say that NASA is uh, both concerned but also determined not to let those things happen. And that's why we're building an international coalition to go with us, especially as we push humanity out into deep space uh, for responsible, sustained human presence throughout the solar system. OK, so break some news for us here. How realistic is it, do you think or do you dream, of finding life outside and off our planet? Let me, let me just quote a couple of astronauts. Tim Peake recently on CNBC says the James Webb Telescope may have already found alien life. We found a planet that seems to be giving off strong signals of biological life. Well, I, I personally think it's inevitable. One of the things <clears throat> that's really been transformative in planetary science science over the last two or three decades is realizing that water, which is a critical building block of life, is much more present even in our solar system than we ever imagined. We thought asteroids were dry bodies that had absolutely no water. Uh, we had real questions even about the moon. Now we're finding it in places we didn't expect. Seeing those building blocks and then our recent sample return from the uh, uh, asteroid Bennu shows not just water, but carbon, which is uh, another critical building block of life. So I think it's only a matter of time. I love the fact that we're finding biosignatures potentially through James Webb Space Telescope, but the real benefit and the payoff is going to be when we go to Mars mm -hmm. and see if we can find signs of life on our neighbor. When will that be? Well, I think um, it's hard to know on the, um, frankly, uh, what you don't know yet. So we do know that it is our most interesting uh, neighbor with the highest potential to find signs of life. So uh, as far as human presence goes, we're really uh, trying to set up a blueprint and we're going to practice it on the moon. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to see us uh, head to Mars 
I think, with our plan by the early 2040s. Now, when you talked about Apollo, you said its mission was to send a man to the moon and bring him back safely. Um, that was not lost on me or you. There has been no woman walking on the moon. And I wonder what you thought, what is your journey to the stars, so to speak? What inspired you as a young girl? Well, I was totally inspired by the Apollo program. And what's interesting is, uh, as I have progressed through my career, the number of scientists, pilots, engineers that I've met who were also inspired uh, by the Apollo program. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Um, so what is exciting to me is to see that our Artemis campaign, I believe, is going to unleash a tidal wave of young people interested in STEM and in space exploration. And this time it's going to happen all around the world. And I'm pretty excited about that. And how did you get into this business? Well, uh, back in the day, the only astronauts that I knew about were military jet test pilots. So being a little stubborn, <laughs> I decided that's what I was going to do, too, even though women were not actually allowed to fly yet uh, in the military. Uh, but I was very fortunate. I was born um, exactly at the right time, I think, Christian. I feel very fortunate that the doors opened just, just ahead of me, uh, allowing women to fly jets in the Air Force, uh, allowing me to become a test pilot. Uh, and uh, that was my progression to becoming an astronaut. A ah, test pilot. It sounds so cool and dangerous and scary and top gunny. And fun. <laughs> and fun, yeah. <laughs> Pam Melroy, Deputy Administrator at NASA, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Christiane. It was a pleasure.